Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Precipice of Delusion. How are you doing? What are you doing? How's the weather? How's your hair looking? How's mine looking? Eh, could be better. Uh, how'd you sleep? You guys feeling all right? How's your mental health? Just checking in. Uh, I hope everybody is doing all right. Spring is finally here. The blossoms are blooming and the sun is coming out. I'm excited about it. It feels pretty good. Um, yeah, you know, all is well here. Just keeping on, keeping on. Moving through life and trying to uh, stay happy, stay motivated, keep joy at the forefront, you know? This week, we have a good friend of mine who became a fast friend uh, in the last couple of years. I met him at a karaoke extravaganza with Alan Stone when him and I were performing. Um, his name is Blake Lewis. You might remember Blake Lewis from season seven. Yes. Could be six. I think it's season seven. <laughs> of American Idol, uh, where he was second runner up to Jordan Sparks. He was the guy that beatboxed in like a bunch of the episodes. He gave me a really cool exclusive interview. He's an incredible singer, um, really, really like talented beatboxer as well. Although like that was what he was kind of like known for on American Idol and not at all like what he really was like focusing on, just kind of what they focused on. Hold on. He's calling me right now. Blake. Oh, baby. Uh, I'm making an in I'm literally making an intro piece for your episode right now. <laughs> so you're on it a a on speakerphone. Yes, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Just everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the precipice of delusion, you freaks. Um, let me make this dude and then I'm going to hop in my car and I'll, uh, cause I'm going to, I got to drive for like 45 minutes. So I'll just call you and if you want, if you're still available and we'll catch up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in the car for the next uh, 20 minutes. So. Okay. I'll holler back at you in a sec. All right, cool. All right brother. Bye. <laughs> nice. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, Blake is awesome. He, uh, has a really intense story about the whole experience of American Idol back in the day. That was in 2007. And he talks about his whole journey of being there, a bunch of kind of like the wild stories that happened. And, you know, some of the not so good things that were going on at the same time. And then really what happened after that is pretty shocking and really kind of like tragic. But um, how he pulled himself out of all that stuff and has become a really fucking righteous dude. Um through a lot of hard work on himself. And I'm very proud to know him. I think he's a great musician. I think he's a great human. Uh, he does a lot of side projects now. You can find him on all the places that you find music. He does some work with uh, Postmodern postmodern Jukebox, who are fun. Um, he does stuff all over town, and he works with all sorts of cool artists and just has a really cool style and um, I love him. I think he's great and I'm just like pumped to be his friend and to keep like spending more time with him. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy my friend Blake Lewis. Oh man, it's so great to see you dude. I know, but also, like, what's funny about that is that, like, it actually was forever before last time we saw each other, because we never even, like, really spent any time together, there so. <laughs> Fast friends, you know? Like, that's always so cool to me. Uh, I just push record anyways, so, like, I hope that doesn't bother you at all. No. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm always so, like, I like to make fast friends with people like I don't I mean I I of course I like to make fast friends but like it doesn't always happen right when you connect Definitely. with somebody really like quickly the way that the way that we did um and yeah I just feel like now I have been a friend of yours for 
several years, but I haven't. I've probably only spent like <laughs> yeah, man. nine hours of my life in to- maybe not even in total. Maybe I, yeah. I, I think we we definitely got a good nine ten hours in there. <laughs> yeah, solid. <laughs> yeah, no, I I I totally um. I'm totally with you on that. Making fast friends is, um, especially at my age now, it just it doesn't happen very much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it gets harder when we're kids. Yeah, it's just like you like the color blue. I yeah. like the color blue. You <laughs> right. know, it's like right. We're besties. You know. Yeah. But now. Yeah. We, you know. Why does it get harder as we <clears throat> become adults? Just because like we are more like detached from like the social world or so i mean I feel like we're more right. attached more, to I it know. i think insecurities and and mm-hmm. life lessons and hardships and it, it could be a, a number of things but you know when you meet people that you just vibe with and, and dig it's and it feels natural it's just kind of like what up do homie let's go you know yeah i think like sometimes i i um i meet people especially in like the the music space. Like I met you through Alan Stone and uh, you know, who's, who's your friend, who's one of my best buds for 20 years. And typically when I meet people like in the music space or in the acting space or like that are in the public eye, so to speak, there's like a little bit of like, Ooh, like, no, oh, that's impressive. I want to like be friends with them because of that. But, and, and that you have that it, like I feel that way with you because I'm like, oh shit! Like I know this guy without knowing this guy. I, I felt the same but, way about you, dude. I was like, this reminds me of like one of my best buddies back home. Yeah, you know? but none of that really seemed to matter as soon as I actually spent like ten minutes with you. I was like, oh, like yes, it's amazing that you are as talented of a musician and as, uh, uh you know, renowned of a person as you have become, but like not that it was all out the window is the second that I'm like going backwards through a drive through McDonald's window with you ordering <laughs> fucking out and in, know, baby, cheese, out and in, out and in, out and in, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, at midnight after a show and it's just like, Oh dude, come on. This is it, dude. We're buds. This is the best. And then singing karaoke with you at the rickshaw in Seattle. It's just like, I don't know, man, there's something really special about being able to be at this age and connecting with people. And yes, of course, like we're aligned in our, our artistic mediums, um, and our pursuits, but I've- like, for me, we're for, just buds. Yeah, for me, instantly it was just like cut from the same cloth. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When I met you, I was like, oh man, because like you, you're you're in Alan's relationship is like totally best friends, and like you know, you see that instant connection, and yeah. it just reminded me of me and my best friend, um, because we're freaking weirdos. You know what I mean? Weirdos, Especially dude. when we're together, it's just like nonstop laughter and stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like when I met you, I was like, oh man, I feel like I know him. I've known him. Yeah. I've known him before I was born kind of, a, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and we were yeah. friends back then, you know? It's the best, you know? man. That's like one yeah. of the the whole thing about accolades and all that stuff. It, it's really like, that's never mattered to me. Like I've never been the person that's gotten starstruck or like, mm-hmm. you know, like I respect, I try and, and respect everyone on an even playing field. Like no matter what, because we're just freaking humans, or yeah. maybe we're the aliens. I don't know. Yeah, um, who does you know, know? At the end of the day, um, and so like, if you can look past people's stuff, you, uh, but you're like definitely right. People are always like, I don't know, especially with this culture now, like social media. Like you're like, you can grow fond of people real easily for like face value. Mm-hmm. You know, which is not ever a good thing. Like you, like how are you ever going to really get to know someone unless you spend actual time with them? Right. Um, and especially now, like when we're older, like it's harder to like make fast friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless yeah. that vibe is right, and it was. You know what I mean? We met, totally, man. Connected, it's, like it was like, what's up, brother? Like this. Guy, it's this rare. Guy. It's yeah. for sure rare, man. You know, it's a special thing when it happens, and and I'm really grateful that it did. I'm really grateful to be your pal, man. Me too, it's, uh, dude. Like it's cool. And I I'm, I was I'm an only child, total weirdo. Oh, wow. Grew up on a a street with no kids till I was ten when we moved finally, and so like I wanted everybody like 
everyone to be my friend. You know what mm, I mean? Like, yeah. you want to be my friend? You want to be my friend? Soon I meet them, but like almost overbearing, you know, the annoying kid. I was totally that guy. Um, and then now you get old, you get older. I mean, obviously I, I ended up having friends as soon as we moved, you know, and, but I still have that like little kid, um, like mentality being an only child basically. And, and like, mm. Hey man, so we're friends, right? You know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's different when you get older. You know, you get mature. I mean, you know, I've had my friends for my life, like my best friend, and I've been friends for like thirty years. You know what I mean? It's and awesome. it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But it's uh it's different nowadays. You know what I mean? Because you can connect in so many different ways. You yeah. know? Yeah. I feel like you're somebody that I could literally just like I like I would want to. Sp- talk and hang out and just like chat all day with you but i could also sit and like not yeah like i feel like you're that kind of guy like i wouldn't need to feel like i'd need to entertain you or impress you or do anything like we could just hang yeah i feel like i feel like we're like qualifying each other on like a dating profile right now or something <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> what are those, those, those bad totally shows, geeking those over five each other minute, uh, dates what are those speed yeah dating yeah or speed dating yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah what is your five-year plan um dude well thank you so much for being here man it's it's uh it's been really cool i i started this like just a couple weeks ago and um i was sitting on it for a while just kind of like the 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 phrase the precipice of delusion was has been like going through my brain for a long time and you know as an artist i i touch on it a lot because i feel like in order to believe that we're capable of doing any of this stuff to begin with we got to have like a somewhat healthy and sometimes unhealthy level of delusion <laughs> and uh you know as we navigate through our professional pursuits we sometimes get farther along in the journey and realize we're actually even more delusional in that pursuit, you know, and like you, 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 as you navigate that space, it, it gets really tricky and everybody has their own experience. Everybody has their own story. And I find that, you know, in trying to maintain my own like quality of life and, self-worth and all of the things that I try to like place value on outside of this pursuit Mm -hmm. gets harder and harder and harder the farther I get into it. And this show has really become a platform for me to kind of just pick the brains of my friends and peers and, and artists alike who have navigated their own space in all of this stuff and come out on the other end or continued to be in it and finding like their approach to staying sane, so so to speak, you know, Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of really wonderful things that come from being an artist and getting to be on stages and getting to be in films and getting to you know, be beloved by people that come to shows and feeling those highs. But uh, the shadow that is cast from doing all of that stuff can be equally, if sometimes more, uh, draining and devastating. And so I just thought it would be cool to have these conversations. And I thought of you because like, I, I don't have a huge amount of knowledge and I'm not sitting here like doing research on all these people. Cause ultimately like, I just want to chat about this stuff, but I I I thought of you because I know you had an interesting journey from like an early like 20 20 years ago was it 20, what like 18 years ago you were on American Idol was it that long ago Man it was 2007 That's a crazy man that's a long like, yeah, time ago 17 years ago this year like this season 17 years it's crazy yeah. yeah and like I know your journey started like well before that um, but because that kind of like put you in the public eye um, and then your career kind of like took shape thereafter in like a much more professional thing from, from what I understand. Um, I'm just kind of curious, like, you know, like, I guess we'll, I, if we can kind of talk about like what that, what, 
what getting there looked like. And then mm. we'll kind of go from there and talk about like what it's looked like since and how you've navigated all this stuff. Um, so, so walk me through how you like came to the whole, it was what, what, what season was that? Was season, when did American Idol start? Season six. It started in 2001. God damn, dude. And I had never crazy. seen it. I had never seen it at all. You hadn't? No. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. Really? Oh. It was so popular. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I didn't watch TV. TV, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I had my own night in Seattle every Wednesday in this in, in this place called Toast in Fremont. Ah, oh, dude, Toast. Um, you know, and we had guests come, at, you know, and, and jam. It was just like a improv night with me and my my music partner KJ Saka who's this incredible drummer producer mm -hmm. and we had like the best of the best in town you know we come come jam come sit in the best MCs singers um Reggie Watts when he was starting his journey wow. through comedy you know he just cool. he just started with loop pedals and stuff and I was I had already been loop looping for years and um you know so that was fun but I, I was that kid I was um you know, just wanting to create all the time, you know, and then, um, you had started, sorry to interrupt, but you had started from like doing musical production and, and singing and performing like r really early on then right out of high school. I got into an acapella group and, okay, cool. uh, they were gigging every day. So like right out of high school, I had like a show basically, uh, I would say, six I think six months after I got out of high school I joined Kickshaw and they were booked out for like four months solid like 30 gigs a month like crazy wow. and then I was also raving I was hosting raves uh um I was a part of a hip-hop group called Unexpected Arrival which I wrote the first hook which Twista got on and then we had nice. a number one in Seattle when I was 19 Whoa. On, on the radio um I was just like gigging nonstop for years and years and years and years and years. Well, before then, American um, Idol came. Uh, yeah, yeah. And actually, I was playing the Triple Door in Seattle when uh, I my my Aussie friend called me. He's like, hey, mate, I'm going to go audition for American Idol tomorrow. You want to come? I'm like, You're great. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, he called me out of the blue, and I was like, "No, dog, that's cool." He's like, "No, come, come, come! I'll, I'll, pe I'll pack a semis, pack, <laughs> pack a sandwiches, and uh, let's go wait in line forever." And and I was like, "No, I've I've never seen the show. I have no interest in in being on a competition show about singing. That's that's not my vibe. You know, I'm in Seattle doing like." underground yeah. drum and yeah. bass jazz weird stuff you know stuff that Sweet. i love and yeah and i love pop i grew up in the pop world mm -hmm. I, I you know tinker around on the piano writing like pop songs and, and on the guitar and play and but you know the only musical covers i was doing was like bjork and like uh <laughs> you know just <laughs> taking songs and twisting them and stuff um yeah and um you know, my friend was like, dude, this is just a cattle call. Just sit. I just need a friend in line. You know what I mean? There's going to be like 10,000 people there. It's going to take a while, whatever. But, you know. And so I went down there and I we stood in line for hours. Um, and because you had to register and I would like registered last, I, that means I was going to go. I was going to be there for like 15 hours or something just waiting in line. <laughs> but, that, but, but that day they decided to you know, go backwards. And they, they started from last to first. So I was like, I got in there, you know, there's like four people. It's like 30 seconds each, 30 seconds each, 30 seconds each. You sing whatever. And they're just like, really look at you up and down. And they're like, Hey, you got a good style. Yeah. I can kind of hear your voice, mm -hmm. you know? And then you mm -hmm. get me, make, make it to the next round, which was like two days later. So I made it. And then he ended up having to wait there all day and he didn't, he didn't make it through the cattle call. So damn dude i felt bad um, yeah but he drug me there and i just you know i kept making it and making it and making it and then all of a sudden i was on american idol and i was just like what the hell just happened like yeah were I, you thrilled yeah i was like scared and thrilled because were you kind of were you kind of like obviously <laughs> no not at all no. no 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 i was like 
so like I'd never auditioned really for anything mm-hmm. except for my acapella group and and that's like much easier. It, it wasn't as stressful when I was like, you know, 19. Here I am like 25 auditioning for American Idol. And then like the people around me telling me how big the show was because I had no idea. Like that's what started to stress me out. Mm-hmm. And then meeting Paula, Simon and Randy and like having to sing in that room. And I was like super nervous and I don't get nervous. Like, mm. I don't care. I don't know who these people are. Like right. obviously I knew who Paula Abdul was and I was like a total <laughs> fan when I was a kid. Like I loved all her songs. Um, but I was like, why am I like, like yeah. full on, like, like shaking, like nervous. Yeah. You know? Um, but I kept making it without, I wasn't really trying. Like I, I didn't rehearse anything. I didn't have songs to sing. They're like, what, what are you going to sing for us today? I was like, I don't know. What do you want me to sing? What do you want me to sing? You know what I mean? Like I did like when I finally made it to the Paula Simon Randy audition, I did like practice a little beatbox thing barely. And like when I practiced it it was cool. And, but then when I did it in the room, it sucked. You know what I mean? Mm. But that's what, of course, what they show on TV. And I'm like, you know what I mean? My audition. Um, and then they're like, yeah, that's cool. Can you sing something else? And I sang Maroon 5 um, Sunday morning. Yeah. But they couldn't show it on TV because they had to have the publishing rights for television. So America really didn't see my audition. They saw like a little moment. And that was the first thing they saw of me. And it was just a beatboxing. And so right away when I got on the show, because – that little beatboxing portion was like filmed four months prior than when you actually make it onto the show. Mm -hmm. So the first month of American Idol, they like, you know, they use everything as a gimmick. You know what I mean? Like television editing, you know, you say you, you swear, you know what I mean? Then that they're going to be like bleeping that out. And they're going to be showing that every clip. Like, remember when Donnie, you know (laughs) yeah and so it was like a quick learning of like the politics minding your p's and q's like biting my tongue because i have back then i had like no tact i'm very blunt i say what i want to say right when i say want to you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i didn't have a filter and my the only people that i knew that watched the show were like two of my best friends you know and they're like, don't do, don't be nervous. You're going to love this. You're going to thrive because it's live. Like it's live. And that's, you know, we know you, you're going to do, you're going to do fine, dude. You're going to do. And I was just like, what? you know, but yeah. I mean, you ask the, you ask these questions about this show and it's like such a can of worms because I bet every day was a new experience. Every hour was a new thing. Like it was insane. Um, I got, I started getting used to it when I started getting comfortable in my own skin is when I did fine. And I had to like basically battle on that show. And it was never about being a contestant. It was like battling producers and them trying to manipulate you into doing what they want you to do, Mm. you know, because it's a TV show and, you know, Nigel Lithgow is like, I'm the biggest producer in the world, you know, kind of, you know what I mean? It's like, you are, yeah, you are, but you don't got to be a dick about it. You know, were you and you were able to like you had the wherewithal at that young age to kind of like talk back and be a bit. I mean, hold, yeah, hold my, your own? Par- my parents kind of raised me to be a rebel. Like my mom mm-hmm. was a rebel. You know, my dad's independent. You know, self-made hard worker. My mom's a hippie. You know, and and they. I've always been truthful. Like I never lied to my parents. Like. The first night I did drugs, I, the next day I was like, I did drugs. Like the night I had sex, I had sex last night. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right, that right. kind of thing. It was like sharing, open. Yeah. And with the producers, I've told them no all the time. They're, they're like, we're going to do this. And I was like, nope, no, we're not. Huh. <laughs> like, I'm wow. not doing that. I'm like, let me go look into the uh, book contract I signed. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to give me time. You know what I mean? Did you so, see other people doing, having like the same approach that you had? Or were you kind of like riding solo in that journey? I, I think that, yeah, there was a couple definitely in my season that were a little more, you know, 
it wasn't even rebellious. It was just standing up for yourself. Yeah, man. They're you know trying to like, shape you and fo- mold you. Into yeah, something. I mean, I saw the manipulation happen with the younger contestants for sure. Um, and, it, and it would work out in their favor for some things. But, you know, you're forced to sing songs you don't necessarily want to sing. You're forced to, like, do all these things because it's a part of the show that you signed up for and whatnot. And, I mean, <clears throat> long story long, it's just – Every single day was amazing. You know what I mean? Until the finale, like I had the best time on that show. You know, it's always bittersweet because, you know, you're just considered a a contestant on the show. But like what that show did for me and my career and, uh, you know, it's like I'm forever going to be synonymous with this this moment in time on this television show that was literally the last like kind of water cooler phenom show that people talked about that brought like families together that were, that hadn't been together in years, like across the globe, you know, people would talk about it and just, you know, the American one. I mean, there was like 40 different American idols in Mm -hmm. whatever country name a country. There was the, you know, Kerplakistan idol, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> so, right. yeah, it was weird, and especially in a time when there wasn't really social media. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, back in my day, <laughs> it's For like, sure. you know, it's like, yeah. you know, we didn't have the Facebook. We, we had, there wasn't Twitter. There wasn't uh, Instagram. <clears throat> it was, it was basically MySpace, and they, they took it away from you. Like you had to sign over. It was basically YouTube and MySpace. So we didn't have an outlet to talk to fans. We were in this full on bubble. The way they treated us was like, you know, I don't know. It was just like, we were grounded all the time. You know what I mean? Like you can't leave your apartment. Right. What was, what was your experience with like, with the attention coming to you? If, if If it wasn't coming through, like, you know, your apps and stuff like that. How how are you seeing yourself kind of like be, because that show was the most popular show in the world at that time. Well, It was the one time it was really, really weird because, so we, we filmed it at CBS, which is next to the Grove in Mm -hmm. LA. And so we could walk over there, but we'd have to have like supervision, like a security person. And I remember I think maybe six of us walked to the to Cheesecake Factory or something. And this girl saw me and Shout she out. passed out right in front of me. And I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like, whoa. And because it was like maybe a couple months into the show, maybe there was like, it was like the top 10. Like there was only like 10 of us left. You know what I mean? And that was the first and only time. Like we'd read some stuff in like TMZ or something because – I'd go out every night and party. Like, mm, I, cool. I mean, I I would go by myself to the Hollywood Improv and meet comics, and that was cool. And then we'd go to Ledoux, which was like the club. Like, a bunch of people wanted to go like to that place every night, and I was like, this is so boring. So I would go to the Hollywood Improv by myself because I love comics. I mean, they're like, I feel like they're the most. I don't know. I I feel more connected to them because yeah. I feel like I'm. They're more like me, a little more Dangerous. like more, just more of like cynical and open and yeah. honest about like what real life is. Sad, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I we weren't supposed to leave, but we snuck out every night, and these were the only opportunities to see like that instant fame and see how how mm, weird. it worked you know like we go into a club they give us a bottle i've never been into i've never a i've never been to hollywood before b yeah a hollywood <clears throat> club with like i'm like l- next to lindsay lohan and paris hilton and just like r- in- and they like might even know who you are because of the show and stuff yeah or yeah. and if they they know then like immediately of course because there's like a promoter and they're like oh those are the new the new dudes that are on American Idol yeah She's yeah gonna yeah win probably like just it was just so weird you know what I mean and like you were also a standout on that show like you were beatboxing was like you know one really fucking cool but two it was like it, that had not been done i, I don't I, it wasn't happening on that show 
at that point, I don't even know if it has has sense. And like, it, so people really liked you and like were just like rooting for you. So I'm sure it was that just seems so weird, man, to be isolated and to like be on probation kind of when you're on that show and to not be because nowadays they'll probably just like, holy shit. I just bumped fucking 125,000 followers on my social media page, like overnight. You don't have that. So you're just like isolated to like a, you know, hotel room or something. And then all of a sudden you like go outside. If you even get it, what do they expect you to do? Just like finish the show. And then all of a sudden just go like hit the streets and get mobbed and like not have any like understanding of how to like <laughs> deal with that. It seems crazy. It was definitely crazy, man. It was, yeah. um, was surreal it was like man that's it's it's hard to like you know wrap it up into like one one package because it was just like odd and not like uh the universe god whatever you you want to say put me in that place like because i kept saying no during the auditions like do this for us i'm like no i'm good you know nah you're gonna sing this song no i'm not you know, like if, if I knew I had the, the control, like I tried to keep it in my lane as much as possible, you know, which was tough to do, but I looked at an American Idol as a remix competition. I'm like singing against all these badasses. I'm like, I'm a vibe guy. Like my voice, I'm not like going to be doing all these crazy things. I only beatboxed on that entire show three times but they oh, showed really? it so That's, much yeah like i mean okay. i mean i mean i may be beatboxed even seconds wise maybe not even 60 seconds in multiple occasions you know what i mean um but they showed it all the time so they're like yeah you're the beatbox guy so they turned it into a gimmick so and in in my my world like in the hip-hop world like the beatbox world then i'm looked at as like Oh, this, this guy's like front and he doesn't care. This isn't an art form to him. Which he's I was exploiting. Getting, I was shit, getting, yeah. yeah. He's exploiting the art. And I was like, no, I'm not. They are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally yeah fuck. Me for me, I just looked, I produced and arranged my own songs and that's what America was gravitating. He's, they liked my arrangements, but they weren't calling that out. You know what I mean? On American Idol, uh, Ryan Seacrest did once. They showed me like on my computer, like arranging the songs, you know what I mean? Which mm -hmm. was like, yay. So I got pro producer loves and I, you know, I'm shouting out people in the, the dance industry, like his dance music wasn't even popular then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it was just so crazy. Like it, <clears throat> you say one thing, you know, you, it, all of a sudden people are down your throat because it was in the media and all these things, but then you didn't have, you couldn't re, have a rebuttal because there was no social media. I couldn't like go on a page and be like, this is actually what happened. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And it's American idols publicists. They're really not yours. They're really looking out for the best interests of the show, not you. Uh -huh. So it was all these like crazy things where like you did all of a sudden you don't trust people. You know what I mean? They had like a, a head doctor. They had like a, a therapist that, that was always asking like people, are you okay? But, I didn't want to say, talk to that dude. Cause it's, everyone's hired by this show. So like, it's, it's so weird. You know what I mean? Like I would, I never knew what a panic attack was or anxiety. And in the finale week, I just, it was like Had over. Em. <laughs> over. Yeah. Because they basically told me I was getting second place because they wouldn't let me arrange or do what I was doing. That got me as far as I did on the show. So everything they said was just a lie to me. And I was just like, it's over. I don't even get to go out on, on my own. I don't get to be second place on my own. They're basically mm, telling me geez, I'd be second man. place. So it was like such a head trip. But up until that time, like I was having a blast because I did win these little, these little battles along the way with the producers and then they st they left me alone finally. Like by the time I got to like top six, top five, they just let me be me and they stopped asking me to like do all these things. They're like, yeah, we, we should just let him do him the whole time. He knows himself. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like I said, it's a can of worms. Like I got stories yeah. for days, like crazy I stories bet. with celebrities and like all these like just, you're like, how is this my life? Were you ever feeling like, ashamed of being associated to it 
oh, just being like, yeah, like I think everyone that's ever been on that show has that feeling. It's like this bitterness because it's not, I mean, it's, it's their fault and not like, it's just a television show, hmm. but there was no infrastructure after the fact. As soon as you're done, they're on to the next cast. They do not give a shit about you. But you look at all these other shows, RuPaul's Drag Race, America's Got Talent, which is this, it's all these shows are based off the American Idol form. Yeah. But they have massive tours with past contestants like RuPaul, like they know what the hell they're doing as a business person. You know what I mean? Cause like right. they're like employing all these people from 20, you know, whatever, when, whenever that show started, they're like, Oh yeah, we're bringing this person back to go on this tour and this, and then we got a show here in Vegas and blah, blah, blah. AGT RuPaul's drag race. They all have shows here. There's no American idol, anything out anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. There's no seasons on Netflix or Amazon prime. You know what I mean? No one can see us ever again. Yeah. So they did not set up a good infrastructure. You know, there's no website where you can go and even look up every season of American Idol. Like, what really? The, yeah. The, even the American Idol websites is, is totally stupid. So Weird. there's no love. I have no love for them after the fact. None. You know, because they Still. didn't really have love for us at all. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Um, which is, suck. it's crazy because I know three of, you know, three of the producers on that show now are like head producers. And I love them. They're great. They're great humans. You know what I mean? But yeah, they asked me to come back <clears throat> like last year, maybe it's last year, maybe the year before um, to sit in the audience and clap for Jordan Sparks because she was mentoring someone on that show mm -hmm. and they wouldn't pay for like my gas to drive from Vegas to LA. God damn, dude. And I told him, fuck off. I was like, yeah, dude, you're insane. You they just wanted you to show, they just wanted you to be there to like clap for her. Yeah. To be like, Oh, I'm here supporting you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I haven't talked to her in like eight years. <sighs> we're not, we're not close friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so, so it's just weird, weird, weird shit like that. But I love Jordan. Like, Sure. I'd do that course. if she asked me, but not you producers. Right. Like, of right, course, right, like right. she called me. I've, that's dude. That's the homie, you know, but that's it's just, so... it's just so it's, it's weird. It's, it's definitely weird. The fact that it's still on TV is dumb. Like they, they filed for chapter 13, like six years ago. And then Disney gets to buy it. Like when it's mm. done, it should be done. No one should be able to buy that. And it, start over again but right that's our government you know and our policies and whatnot but it's just it's weird man yeah it you sounds know? like it man it's i mean it, it like honestly if you spend enough time thinking about like the format of the show and like the the you know ins and outs of the whole entire thing if you actually spend enough time thinking about it you're like you can become a little suspicious of what the fuck's going on be behind those doors you know you're not just like oh wow these guys, like you know people america is looking at it because they're just watching it and they're fucking brain dead but like ultimately it's it's pretty obvious that like because especially dude there's so many people that go and honest like it's such a weird new approach to artists like thinking that's the only way to even get any form of attention at this point like that's like they literally grow up being like that's my aim that's where i'm going towards now well, yeah well and it's, it's it's like the fame mentality like people want to be famous for yeah. like no reason like well are you putting the hard work and dedication in and in to the craft and yes you're talented but Talent means nothing unless you like know how to work and, and handle right. certain situations and, and you got to be a good businessman nowadays. Like I'm not <clears throat> ragging on the show because it was the best experience till sure. it became the worst experience. Like yeah. one week doesn't trump my whole year with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I, I still got to go on tour with them. I got signed to a major label. Like all the things that came from it, like the good and the bad, you got to take it yeah as sure. is you know what i mean and accept it and it's just was it it's just the only thing that's just bittersweet is that it's like it the way we were handled you know what i mean it was just mm -hmm. like as humans it was just kind of yeah 
it was kind of sad mean? and gross at cer- certain times in the aftermath. The fact that like, how, how do all these other entities that are like big shows and they give so much love and support to their people that were on their stuff, but we all got left in like everybody, every season gets like left in the dust. Like, you know what I mean? Which yeah. Is sad. You know, it's like every like contestant I've ever talked to, we've always ha- had this, um, you know, kind of these, these questions, why, like, why, like, and some of us has gone and like taken steps to like get things started off the ground. Like I would host idol parties and blog about this stuff and, and get people together and put shows together in Punta Cana and in Mexico. I put like, you know, these badass shows together and like, you know, it's just, I'm like, see how easy it was for me to do that? Like, why yeah. can't like someone with money, like American Idol, like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Um, That'd be fun too, putting, to see like reunion shows or something like that. If they were, willing yeah, to- I mean, I tried getting a television off the ground twice and like wow. had a good show runner, you know, tried shopping it. I had people from the voice America's got talent, American idol, like, uh, called an idol life, but, you know, uh, and, um, no, like people would pass, like people don't even, people didn't even want to touch the American Idol property, like all for legal rights and whatnot. And I, and I get it far as like certain shows, you know, um, because of the publishing rights and copyrights, like that's, that's the reason why there is no seasons of American Idol on Netflix. Like you can't mm-hmm. watch the one through 20 seasons of these shows. You know what I mean? Right. Um, because of these licenses that they had for the show, because there's so much, you know, we're singing, you know, Bon Jovi, and we're, then we're singing Madonna and Prince mm-hmm. and Michael Jackson and stuff. You got to get all those licenses. And there wasn't streaming back then, but, you know, like two years, three years later, was it 2010? Netflix became a streaming company. Anyway, it's like, they should be on, they should be there. I should be able to go to freaking whatever streaming platform and For watch sure. my season. I've never seen my season of American Idol. Really? Yeah. I've never wow. seen my season of American Idol. And I want to watch, I want to watch it. I want to see how fucking stupid I was, you know? Cause there, <laughs> you were great, dude. That was probably like the last <clears throat> season I actually like watched while it was happening. I, I um, mean, I did some stupid things there because I like so didn't care at certain times. But that's probably but they why they would it worked, wake us man. up and then we'd have to be on camera and, I, and I'd be like, huh? you know, were you mean? like drinking and like boozing and just being a fucking wild child while oh, it was dude, happening? Like- for sure. Yeah. Oh, there was one time I was so stoned. Um, <laughs> I won't say who made them, but someone's mom brought us weed brownies and um, a, a contestant. I won't, I won't throw a homie under the bus, but we, we took them. And, and at that time, like I could like smoke people under the table. I, I wouldn't get high. Edibles really didn't do anything. She, and she's like, yo, these are real strong. Don't eat a lot of these, but they were such good brownies. I ate three of them. And, um, and you know, we're, we're like learning my, we're in the apartments. It's after the show. It's like 10 o'clock at night. And, uh, I go in the bathroom, I like a shower, I come back out and homie is just like, Dee! you know, just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know, just so ripped. And uh. um, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I play a video game, blah, 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 three hours, like not high, nothing. I was like, see, I was like, see, I don't get high. I go to bed. We have to wake up at 6 a.m. to go meet and get ready to sing for Jennifer Lopez because it was J Lo's week, her first time ever on American Idol. It was Latin Latin Week on American Idol, and I'm singing uh, "I Need to Know" by Mark Anthony, her nice. current husband. Oh, whoa! I wake up. It's 3:30 in the morning. I stopped breathing. Oh I'm like in my head. I got like, I got some, this, this group hybrid that I love, which is like a 60 piece, like Russian symphony with like breakbeat. They've done like a hundred different movies, you know, but it's just like, okay. 
<laughs> with like, yeah, 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 you know? <laughs> and then I'm like, Blake, breathe, Blake, breathe. I'm like, <gasps> and I like go, he's still high on the couch. Like, and I go out there and I'm like, Gish. and so I get, I get no sleep. I instantly lose my voice. I got to meet J Lo. It's like seven thirty in the morning. I'm telling like the producer, like I'm sick. I'm like, I'm weed hung over for sure. <laughs> Probably still baked. So yellow eyes, like putting drops in no voice. I'm like, I have no voice. Nothing. I got nothing. And in comes, we're like sitting there, like, you know, like preschoolers, like waiting, sitting on the ground, waiting for J-Lo to come in, like now class kind of thing. And I'm just like, you know, in walks this goddess yeah, in right. person, just, you know, gorgeous, like, you know, incredible. Um, and you know, it, it's my turn. She's like, you're our favorite. And, and then surprise, Mark Anthony comes in Oh my God. and I'm singing his song. He wrote about her when she was 18. Like he's been in love with her forever. And now she's his wife. Whoa. And he takes me outside in the hallway and he like kind of throws me up against a wall. And he's like, I wrote this song. <laughs> oh my you have God. to sing to her. You're telling her, I need to know. Tell me, baby girl, because I need to know, like, the passion. Oh. Latin music is about passion. And I was so, <laughs> I was so out of it. Um, but it was amazing. I'm never, I'll never uh. forget that. Like, it's vivid as it happened. Like, it's like one of those memories I'm, I'll have for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? So uh, that's awesome, dude. You know, and that was like every week that like, yeah, we got to shoot music videos every week, you know, like do these like, you know, five, half a mil Ford videos for Ford yeah. because they were the sponsor. And then there was Coca-Cola, you know, it was so crazy. It was like this conglomerate of just yeah. like money and just, yeah, it was crazy. And Reminds me of like rookie of the year when Kevin Kevin or whatever his fucking name is Rosen Gardner, uh, like gets oh, yeah. into the into the league and he starts doing like Coke commercials and stuff and all of his friends are just like, bro, <laughs> yeah. we're just trying to go fishing and he's just like, sorry guys, I got to do my Pepsi commercial. Yeah, <laughs> Thomas, uh, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Hayden. Eden, Eden. Yeah, I don't yeah, fucking yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Henry Rosen Gardner, Rosen Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great, great Sorry. click. Tangent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh that's awesome, man. That's 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 such a cool story about it's Mark just, Anthony. He's like he's like, you must caress her. <laughs> you pretty, like just make love to her and tell yeah, her how you feel. Yeah, like it was it was intense. it was so <sighs> intense. Yeah. And amazing. God. And they were so great. And that was like, you know, every week you got to meet I mean, some someone crazy good in their field or popular and it might not be someone that you know or or care about it but it was still cool to hear their stories and yeah. if they would open up i mean some of the the mentors were just like not good mentors and they could care less about being on american idol too it was just kind of like you know like oh they had a they had a song coming out and they needed to promote it so they went on american idol or something you know what i mean yeah yeah um which you could uh, tell, like if they were like like see, Bon Jovi, which I get a lot of credit for, like he, the band was awesome, but he didn't seem like he gave a fuck about being there at all. I'm sure he did. Kind of douchey, um, but the band was awesome. Like yeah, Sambora. And, yeah, and I, I know, Portmere. I know you have, I know you have, uh, like or you had your feelings while it was happening of like getting kind of like positioned in the second spot. Um, and I'm sure while you were in it, it was like devastating because of the way that they were handling it with you. But in retrospect, are you like so glad that you didn't get first? Oh yeah. I never wanted for, I mean, the only thing I, cause I'd never seen the show. It was always like my preparation 
was how do I get that 10th spot so I could go on tour? Right, right. Because tours when you wake, make money because yeah. you didn't make money for being on American Idol. It was a competition show. Like you mm-hmm. didn't get, we didn't get paid. Not so, even for like the t- TV time? You get paid for TV time because it's union and you're in right. California. So we had right. to sign up for that, you know, which was like two grand a person. Um, so basically th- they did it so like if you made it past a, you know, you kept being on TV instead of getting paid, you got, it went to the wages to the union. So you could get paid, you know, which didn't work out for people that, you know, got cut real quick, right. you know, but it worked out for us because we kept going on every week, which was like, for me, it was good. It was like two grand a week. You know what I mean? I was at that point in yeah. time, I had like part-time jobs and I was just a full-time musician. So I, w- I was used to, making like only maybe two grand a month, you know, Sweet. for uh, years and years. And I never cared. You know what I mean? So this was like, Oh shit. This is Plus like- you just got craft service downstairs at every turn. You probably yeah, have some rice crispy treats, right? Smart now. water. Yeah. Smart water and fucking <laughs> yeah. cheese. It's everywhere. Yeah, no, for sure. Those, what are those ones that are like the six pack that have like the, the orange well, peanut butter, uh, the Ritz, the Ritz peanut yeah, butter crackers. Yeah. Yeah. Those things, those packs or whatever that yeah, are like, yeah. <laughs> from the 1950s or whatever um yeah we had all that stuff um yeah wait what was the question uh, I, I i forget myself oh um because you got you got second oh, and yeah. i was asking like were you happy that you didn't get first yeah no that I mean, it was literally like as soon as i got to the top 10 i kind of was i kind of was just like cool like yeah. I was already instant. Everything after that was like, I I was trying to just to make the best arrangement of for that week. Like I don't sing country music. How can I make this a cool song and arrange it my own way? Uh, you know, like Latin music. Like how could I how can I keep keep my cool while trying to make something cool? You know what I mean? Right. That's right. all I cared about because I did not care about. I already made it on the tour. That's all that mattered mm-hmm. to me. I honestly did not make it to the finale. But by the time it was the top six, I mean, that's when I met like Dougie Fresh and I met people and I was, I knew, I just knew I was like, I'm going to be in the top two. I'm going to be in the finale. Yeah. Were you like, I'm, I might, I'm, I might win. Yeah. I mean, I, when I met Dougie Fresh, I'm like, yo, would you come to the finale and perform with me if I make it there? Because I, I have like a 99% chance that I'm going to be in the top two on this show. And, um, you know, he, of course, you know, like it was great. So that was like the, the best thing about being in the finale is like getting to bring like the original, the Godfather, the, the legend that is, you know, Dougie fresh and, and bringing hip hop to American Idol because hip hop had never been on American Idol before. So, yeah, I am, proudly get to say that i help usher in a new era for american idol um yeah and i still get written about it today and and wow. like the main articles is like how i changed that show and um awesome. the next year they let people play instruments because of me you know what i mean they literally said that because you know because i loved i loved you, you man you, you get to we're gonna have people play instruments I was like, cool, because I asked them to use my loop pedals like every day. I, all I wanted to do was a one man show on that on that show, and they wouldn't let me. But I got to do it on tour, so that was like, how how can I still represent myself even after being on the show? Now I'm on the tour. Like, how can I represent myself true to form yeah. in the way that I have always done? You know? So, yeah, but, dude, uh, I loved it, man. I thought you were fucking killer i i'll never forget i don't know know why i don't even know how you feel about the performance but the virtual insanity you did the jamiroquai performance right yeah yeah that was so fucking cool and like yeah i just like it's like ingrained in my memory as being like like one of my just like american idol like memories like i don't that's so crazy that much more man well thank you that was the second thing i ever did that was just like the top 22 or something it was great it, it the the one thing that our season had that others didn't is for some reason the first three weeks they said you can sing whatever you want. 
And I was like, what are things that represent me? I, like the first night, everyone came out the gate guns blazing. Mm-hmm. I sat down and sang a ballad. Yeah. Because I knew they were going to pigeonhole me as, as this beatbox guy. And I was like, well, I got to sing something. Mm-hmm. And they were like, dude, you're risky. Like everyone was like, you're such a roost taker. And I was like, no, I just do me. It's yeah. Not, it's not, if you're not stepping out of your, who you are, you're not really taking a risk. Right. Right. Like, right. You see it as a risk because you're programmed to do things this Fall way. In line. And, yeah. and you're being in this box. Me, I'm the guy that's always like doing my thing over here. You yeah, know, I don't want to sure. be a part of this box, you know? And thank you, man. That meant, that means a lot because the first three songs I sang were somewhere only we know, which was keen which I was obsessed with them and that uh, yeah. the, the way he writes his like almost choir boy tone. Um, Jamiroquai, because I was obsessed with them. Come on. Dude. Like before there was Maroon five, there was Jamiroquai. Yeah. And you know, he's influenced by Stevie and disco and, and, and then I sang three eleven, which was the third one. Yeah. And so I got to represent me on like three bands that I love three parts of my vibe and my tone of voice that are represented from these three bands. And so I really thought that I got to represent who I was the very first three weeks of being on that show, which on a lot of seasons they didn't do before. You know what I mean? They were like straight into like, it's country week. You know what I mean? It's the, you know, so you have to like, it was a little tougher. So I think we had it a little easier because we got to sing what we want if we got the publishing for it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, and it was like a good, I don't know. I was like, it was almost the warm up. You know what I mean? It was like, yes, I was already on the show, but there were so many of us. There was, it was like the top 24, the top 20, top 20, the top 16. Teen, you know, because I think it was four, four. Then it was like one and one. Yeah. Because I think the first couple shows, two people got voted off. See, I don't know. Like, my, I also have a really yeah. bad memory. There's so much stuff I don't remember, which I would be able to remember if I got to watch the show. Right. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Because I man. have a really bad memory and it just makes me so mad that I can't watch the. That sucks, one, man. That's the like, yeah. biggest. The biggest television show ever is Unavailable. not available to watch. That's so weird, man. And makes the biggest me show ever, besides the Super yeah. Bowl. Right. Of all time. We For cannot, sure. We cannot watch. It's insane, man. Well, I mean, it's really cool that you got to kind of exit that show, I hope, feeling like you represented yourself mm-hmm. honestly. You know, because I feel like there could be a lot of regrets from people nowadays and even before, you know, have that, that were a part of that show that, oh, you know, yeah. really kind of like fell in line with what the producers were telling them to do. And then they exited it and they had whatever kind of career they had. And it was really kind of like shaped by the way that they were being told to be. And yeah. you didn't no, have I mean, that. I mean, people that won are bitter about the show. Like, I'm, yeah. like Kelly Clarkson was for years and like, yeah. you know, pe- people that win the show you know because like i said because of this like lack of infrastructure i think um you know and you know you know we said we willingly said yes we willingly signed these contracts but you don't know until you have you it happens you know what i mean and you go through the experience and whatnot um uh but man i had something Really poignant to say, and I totally forgot. You uh, fucking son uh, of a bitch, dude. God damn it. I know, dude. It's all those weed brownies you had back in the American Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I never did weed brownies <laughs> after that, ever. Yeah, dude. Stay away from them nowadays, dude. That shit's yeah. crazy. Panic attacks are no fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, like, what? Do you, <clears throat> once you left, did, like, how long did fame kind of chase you the way that it was happening with the show oh man it was um narnar bobo i bet <laughs> yeah fucking weird dude <laughs> i would have um, fucking freaked out I if i saw this, you like house that i couldn't afford oh really money how did you have that, money because i got signed to a major label oh and they gave you like an advance yeah they gave you your advance and i put it all down on a house oh my and God. then 
the short sale crisis of 2008 happened. I had to short sell my house. I lost all the money I had. So I like went from American Idol thinking I was making a good business deal buying this house. Got a business manager after I bought the house. Flip that and I would have been fine. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of just um, kind of screwed myself. Honestly, it was uh, I got dropped from my uh, label, even though I was like in the top 10 on Billboard. Um, and um, yeah, it was um, how you say really 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 weird aftermath getting signed to clive davis clive davis basically not doing his job with my album he getting fired or let go from uh rca to me getting dropped when the new people came in to me losing my house to me not going on tour because caa wouldn't put me out with anybody um me like begging my management like i need a day-to-day person I sh- you know what i mean it's all it, it's such a blur that how time, fast did that happen it was like way rapid, up here rapid really yeah like to where everyone's like but everyone just sees you as like rich and famous where i just lost everything i have no money yeah i'm famous because i was on the biggest television show ever but no one's fucking with me when i like doing well, like I sold, like I made the record label like $3 million or something. Maybe that's chump change to them at a time where like the record industry is collapsing. They don't know what to do with streaming or MP3 downloading. You know what I mean? It was all about iTunes sales then. Um, Yeah, man, it was just, it was a weird two years. I got I more depressed than I ever had been. I didn't know what depression was. I was drinking like, two bottles of red wine a night plus smoking weed and just like screaming into a pillow, you know, my friends, half the people in Washington, not knowing I was like living there. You know what I mean? I wasn't going out. I was just like a recluse because I didn't want to stay in LA because I didn't really know anybody there. But at the same time, that's where all the business was. And I left the business to go home to, to be around like besties. But I was just like, yeah, I'm totally fine. You know what I mean? Hiding from everybody. And my whole life got flipped, turned upside down. I like used to be like a go getter. I I play every night, not give a, 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 a hoot about what anyone thought. And then all of a sudden my whole brain was rewired. And I'm like, that's all I was thinking about was what people thought of me. And, and, you know, it totally like changed my life on the bad side, the tail end of it, you know what I mean? The, the, the dark side, you know? So I had to figure out how to get myself out of that situation and it should have been therapy. Um, you know, kicking myself for years that I didn't get therapy back then, which I've had now, um, for a few years. And back then I was just like, what happened? Like, like it totally, shaped me in a in a in a bad way you know what i mean put me in a in a hard spot all these people all the yes people in your years saying yeah yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna do this blah 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 blah. and then it's just like every ball just getting dropped you know what i mean you you, if you went back in time though you like i don't know that you could have or would have done anything different right like you didn't it wasn't like you were doing anything wrong or like making bad decisions i mean maybe like the, the, as a result of these things happening you started making bad decisions to like you know th- drown your sorrows in bottles of red wine and pot and all that shit mm-hmm. but like it, like you bought the house not knowing the financial crisis was going to come you got that advanced thinking that you were fucking the uh, legit because you yeah. were like yeah, you had yeah. all of these reasons to believe that you were like moving in the right direction and it's so fucking crazy man because like i see this is so this is so consistent among so many people that like they get that thing they like get to where they thought they were going and then like as soon as they get there it's like the farthest thing from the answer they thought in right. fact it like actually ruins them 
And it's like, whoa, man, like, be careful what you wish for, kids. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and I didn't really have anyone in my life to talk to about this or felt that I could talk to anyone about it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there was like some Hollywood therapists that like are experts in that division, but like in my direct life, Mm. not even in my periphery, like I didn't have anyone, you know what I mean? I had other creatives that were doing well, but I needed, I needed some wisdom. I needed like couldn't you hit up Justin Warini? <laughs> <laughs> you know him, you know what I mean? Damn, um, dude. Uh, you know, I had a couple people that were real good. They're like, get a business manager, get a business manager. And I kept hearing them, but I didn't do it until after. I was like, it should have been like the first thing I do. Like Nick, Nick Hexum of 311, super kind to me. He was like, dude, get a business manager, blah, blah, blah. Here's mine. I ended up getting uh, the one that he was using, but it was like way too late. It should have been like, shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Um, I do things quick. You know what I mean? I grew up like knowing that like having, like owning a house is what you need to do, but I should have bought the starter house, not yeah. the big house. You know what I mean? Like, I was sure. like I'm going to buy this big house and everyone can live with me and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. yeah. It's dumb. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm of course there's like, like there's reg- the only regret, 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 David regret I have the only regret that I have <laughs> uh, is biting my tongue because mm. that's not my thing. Like I'm always just like going to say, tell the truth. You know, if you don't like it, that's cool. We disagree on something, whatever. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me, but I got to at least say it. And there's only been a couple of times. And, and one was like the finale of American Idol. The other one was like, you know, n- not even necessarily like biting my tongue, but just not listening to the, the, the people, the, the actual people that had my best interest. It was the people that were the gatekeepers I was listening to that like had my life in their hands, like my management, the record label, all these people, you're kind of like, you become a pawn in your own life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Your own chessboard. You're not the king anymore or the queen. You're like the fucking rook, you know? So it's definitely weird. It's a head trip. I got out of my management by my spacing and saying, Hey, looking for new management on my, MySpace," because my management wasn't like returning my phone calls and shit. And they instantly called me like, what is this MySpace message? I was like, Oh yeah. Now you want to talk mm-hmm. like I, you've been saying for a year, I would have a day, day to day person. You guys are mismanaging me like bye. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Double dipping, like all that stuff, like 19 management. They were 19 ah, records. They were 19 management. So they were like taking 40% of my income and stuff, which was illegal, but they were getting away with it, you know? And you're in your like mid twenties, 26, 27, yeah, something 20, like that at this point. Yeah. 26. And it was just bad, man. Like real bad. God. And, and, and I had an album out. And they're like, you, yo, you got to start your, your next album like ASAP, blah, 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 because that one didn't do anything. I was like, it didn't do anything because everything was mismanaged and like not promoted <clears throat> and stuff. And I was like the most hyped person coming off that show in a long time. And they like they gave it a month. It was like, oh, we tried for a month. It's like, come on. Yeah, what? God, dude. Like, God, yeah, that so. would be so frustrating, dude. I would be so yeah i mean and then i i wrote some dark dark really artistic stuff you know like six minute songs and you know like you know i got i got that out creatively you know Mm -hmm. um and then i did i i made my second album heartbreak on vinyl which is you know about that that song dj's connected with and actually played it organically and it was promoted right and it's about you know easy street records closing down in Seattle. And after I wrote that song, Sunday. easy street records closed down in Seattle. I mean, I, I, I am, you know, so, um, there's only one left in West Seattle, the original, which is turned into what, like a fucking chase bank. No, a, a easy street. There is one left, but there was three in Seattle. Yeah. But the one down in like queen Anne now is just yeah, like then, a yeah, bank. Like a chase isn't bank. It? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So sad. Ugh, so sad. Um, and that was like my spot. That was like, I'd go down there all the time. And, but, um, you know, 
that part of my life was like such a learning, like young, like you're so young at 25. You don't know what the hell is going on too. I mean, like, you know, that's like most people are just getting their first job out of, out of college and, and, and whatnot. And that was my college. You know what I mean? I didn't, I, I had yeah the hard knocks of like get going through the, uh, the ringer of television into yeah the music industry that I really like, yeah, I'd been playing for seven years professionally, but I wasn't in the industry. Once you become a recording artist and you're dealing with like lawyers and all these other things, it's completely different than going and playing a pub, you know, seven nights a week or something, you know? So what do you think was the like impetus to, to kind of like transition you out of that stage of your life? Cause I imagine that was not easy at all. Like you must've had to do some real deep interpersonal work to like. Yeah. Honestly, find... I, I moved back to LA. I, I did like a crash course of just like starting from the bottom. Like I, I just. No money, no nothing. Like you were just literally. Like yeah. I had a little, living. yeah. I, I stayed at a friend's house for like 10 months, like basically crashing on the couch in Eagle Rock to um like paying you know a little bit of, uh, of rent to and, like and, trying and, and, to like really make the second album happen to yeah it was a struggle it's been a struggle not to, to you know every career has its up and downs but when you're like you're on the top of the mountain and yeah. then crashing down like it's it was such it was so weird that like it was all fake to me you know what i mean like my fame the success it was all fake well, yeah, because you were probably like, real, you know, you were probably in like the worst state of your life, and people were like, "Oh my God, it's you!" And yeah. you're just like, mm. "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah." Drunk people like pet peeve, like, "Oh man," like people just drunk at shows, and you're just trying to watch like and get inspired by someone, and you're getting like, you know, tackled by some Bethany or Karen, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Will you be box for me? Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, man. So you'll, you know, it's just like you smile and take it as best you can and, and you know, it know that it, it comes from a place from love. If if some of that shit comes from malice, then yeah, fuck off. But like right. most of it's love, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, that stuff didn't really bother me, but. It's like, yeah, you you don't know what I'm going through. Like, you True. you see me because you just saw me on television. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm fucking so broken inside right now. You know, like, ugh, you know. So that's why I didn't go out a lot. Like for the first two years after American Idol, like it's like no one saw me. It's like, where are they now? It's like, yeah, I was mm. fu- I was gone. I was like yeah. inside, playing, had showered and playing like four months video games. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Long hair come out with this full beard, <laughs> yeah, grizzly. Yeah, just you know? drinking a fucking fifth of looking like Jose Cuervo a night, like just fucking Forrest Gump on his run or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, dude, <laughs> fuck. Um, ah. Yeah, so it, it took a long time to 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 you know get to a good place and be myself again. Like a long time. Like I'm talking like a decade long. You know. I would say like mid thirties, I was like, okay, here's me. And then over the last few years, I've did like actual therapy and, and, you know, you know, I'm still never going to be the same as I was prior to that show. You know what I mean? Which is, should be true to everyone after that long thing. Obviously you're not going to be changing, you know, there's going to be changing. You're going to grow. You're going to, you hope that you're, you're growing as a human and not (laughs) digressing. So um, I know that I'm in a good place mentally i know that when i get depression or like my form of anxiety i know there's steps i can take i can you know i can get myself to a good place and i don't need to necessarily phone a friend or you know there's things now you know where i can latch on to and grasp of and i have a better look at reality now yeah. than i did then because for a while there was still that you know, the fa- I, it's it's weird to me to even say it out loud, but I'm still famous. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, man. And I will forever be because I was on this sh- one show. Yeah. That's nothing I ever wanted. Mm-hmm. And so it's weird, like, cause, uh, to, and, I, and I do, I get like, 
I still get recognized. And it's like, I, I have fans out there. It's weird for me to have fans. Like even, you know what I mean? Cause I do this cause I need to do it. I need to get certain things off my chest. Cause I love to create. I love to write. I love to perform. And yes, I love the kinetic energy when I'm on stage and with people and I love to connect with people um, and communicate. And it's, it's still a trip to me that, you know, I have fans from this show, but I also have fans that are just only found my music. And those, yeah, those are my favorite people because it's like the stuff they've connected with me with my words or, or my voice <clears throat> in that way. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's weird because it's like, it shouldn't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it, man. You know, I mean, I don't because you know? I, I wasn't in that experience, you know, with you, but I, I can understand how, how that would feel. Um, but, you know, it still was you back then as it is you now. And mm -hmm. so, you know, people, people don't know any better. They just like you for you. And yes, that was their like introduction to you. She likes me for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, 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 Cleopatra. Is that the same song? <laughs> um, yeah, dude. And like, look, dude, you're such a like lovable dude as it is that people probably just <clears throat> like you for being a person outside of just being the musician. And, you know, you're like, I, I imagine it's just, yeah, dude, it's, it's tricky for you, dude. Like that, that's, this is like why I, I was so fascinated to have you on the show because I thought like, God damn, dude, I really want to, I, I just wanted to know personally for myself, like what, what was that like? I can't imagine it was just like some quick, easy thing. And I'm so happy that now, you know, I'm, sh I know that decade was, was really tough. Um, and it probably still is at times. It probably still is like today, even maybe, you know, like that stuff comes in and out. And I'm sure like, even for me, I, when, when good things happen now in my life, because I've, I've had my own highs and lows, not to the same degree that you have, but like, whatever, what's all our own experience. And mm -hmm. I have to go into like really exciting experiences kind of like protecting my own heart while I go into it, knowing like, I don't want to really fall in love with this experience so much. Cause if I do, it's going to be over and I don't want to feel devastated. I don't want to be yeah. devastated by the outcome of this really beautiful thing that's happening right now. And sometimes it pulls me away from even being present to like the yeah. love and the joy of the thing. And it's like, if oh, you're how did that yeah, happen? Man, the, 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 the protecting yourself, you know, allows you to not fully, immerse yourself or experience things and you're just guarded by your own experience man you know and like, i know how free i was back then and like how guarded i've become and it's really sad you know what i mean it's definitely you know now especially in because of covid too like in the pandemic like i i was already like kind of guarded before um which is so not like me because I'm like fun loving, want everyone to be my friend, love producing events and getting people together and connecting people. And like I was always a matchmaker and stuff to where now I'm just like so introverted. I don't want to go outside. Um, I don't meet new people. I don't make new friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've slowly, surely because – that one part of my life doesn't define me. You know what I mean? It was a year of my life. And yes, it was significant, significant traumatic. It was like any word you want to throw at the wall. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And um, it was a lot of the best times and a lot of the worst times all at once. You know what I mean? It was, it's, mm -hmm. it's undefinable for me, but how it has defined me and shaped me was in some of my control and not in some of my control. And it was like, you know, so, uh, it's so crazy, um, that this one little thing, which is not little can def define and reshape you. And me, it's just like, okay, that turned me this clay into this. And now can I go back to this? And, you know, mm -hmm. um, and now it's like, I feel more myself than I ever have been because I have put in the work. It's been a long time and um, yeah, I love life. So it's like, it's oh, so, man. it's just so weird. Like bringing up, bringing up this one thing because it was so defining 
um, for so many people, um, it's just it's such a, a weird thing to talk about because I had the greatest time ever mm-hmm. to like the aftermath being like the worst time ever, which almost doesn't, I can't credit it t- to one thing, you know what I mean? But it was one thing. It was because of a television show over here, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I don't know, man. We can talk about this for hours and hours and hours, but totally, man. Um I uh uh I learned so much about myself. It, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Like you going through a like a traumatic experience, you know, it's gonna like open your eyes and whatnot. And it's not like I lost a foot or like something like devastating happened to me. It's like the, uh, like a, a, a positive that people would be like, and be like, Oh, shut up, dude. You, you had it all that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, Oh man. Like, you know, it's, it's weird. Like the littlest to the biggest things can like affect your life. It's, it's kind of incredible. Well, it seems like at this point in your life, you've kind of, I mean, whether or not like you are, disassociated from the American Idol like world or not, you have created an identity outside of it for yourself as a musician, as a person and as everything else. And whether or not like you still hold on to those experiences as being like part of your identity now is like maybe just up to you. It's like you can make that decision or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just like inherently a part of you and you can't get away from it even if you want to i don't know regardless you have like the blake lewis show now that it has nothing like when i look at you i don't like yes i know that and so it's interesting to me because i think it has a lot to do with like how you got here Mm -hmm. but you're most definitely like a product of the experiences and like who you've become thereafter and somebody who has like built up a really like incredible character as a result of it, as opposed to like falling down and becoming a miserable piece of shit because, (laughs) you know, they couldn't handle it, which is probably true for a lot of people. Um, You know, that pressure will crack you. And it will really hurt you and it will make you bitter and resentful to the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can fall into drugs. You can fall into, you know, like bad relationship patterns. The whole, like, probably the the majority of people that have these experiences go in that route. And so it's a real testament to your character, man, like that you were able to get out of it despite how long it took or how long it's taking. The fact that you're like doing therapy now, man, it's like it's so big and it's so awesome. And like, I try to do the same thing for myself. And I just think that like, it's, it's like, it's so fucking wild to me that every like level that you get in this, in this pursuit to, to chase your dream, it's almost like the farther you get, the harsher it gets, man. <laughs> like it really seems that way with the people that I've been talking to. Cause I've talked to people at like all different levels and everybody's just like, nah, man, like it doesn't really get easier. It gets kind of nastier and a little more like, and you just have to learn how to be the person you want to be and put your value outside of it and then like let it do its thing. Like let it exist and kind of like try to navigate it how you want to. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel really bad for a lot of these like young stars, man, because it's just like, how do you like... I mean, I I do and I don't because it's this. I mean, for the most part, I do because the scrutiny and the and the microscopes and the just like the attention at that age, man. Like, I'd be dead. I'd be fucking oh, dead. Honestly, yeah. even if I had your experience, I'd probably be dead. And so, it's kudos to you, man. Like, I, oh, I'm really, thanks, I'm really just like astonished by your journey and and who you become because I know you now like in your new chapter of like the guy that you like to be. Right. And that guy fucking kicks ass. (laughs) Like he's fucking, he's the best. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks dude. Well, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of, you know, there's, there's only one me and, and, and I, I got to like treat him, treat him nice and treat him well. You know what I mean? It's taken me, it's taken me a while to like learn what self love is, you know, or what that looks like for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what I need to do to be a good human and how I can be good to others, you know, and, and 
by being good to myself and like treating my body right and my my spirit and my you know mind body and soul like all comes together and it's taken me a while you know and if i lose track of that i know i'm just gonna go into a dark place and 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 then i'm just gonna have to like rebuild and crawl out and how many times am i gonna do that until i'm like you know even keeled you know so right. it's taken you know once you fall you got to get back up you know and 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 getting back up might take longer um um or if 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 you have been working on yourself it's gonna it's each every time it's gonna get a little easier you know what i mean yeah um but uh thank you for saying that i appreciate it of course and, man um dude i um yeah right now it's it's it's, it's a different world like i i look i view things differently it's been a long time i don't i'm um i just like i create so much now and i've gotten back to like who i am and who i love and like and and what i'm about and and how to like proceed in this interesting world of social media and like the weird social construct that is life now with the way things are in the streaming world and and music in general and like how to make make a living in in this world of just like consume 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 and everything just sounds recycled and re regurgitated how can i stick out and how can i be me in this interesting landscape that is my life now you know yeah it's a it's it's um challenging but i love my life and it, i think my life's it. pretty freaking fun and i got good humans in my life that keep me sane and and uh life's good now you know what i mean pandemic yeah. the pandemic sucked and that was also like the uh a big like wake up call to everyone especially in the art in and pursuing art yeah in whatever form that may be like you know like kind of having to look outside that box again and and reevaluate and you know perspective shifts and uh you know changing focus or directions and in certain way you go about doing things and and mm -hmm. you know it sucked but at the same time now that I'm where i'm at now i'm just like oh that sucked for a reason and now i shifted you know yeah how fast yeah. can you shift can you you know i'm still working on myself all the time and i'm still trying to navigate in this crazy landscape that is social media i mean during pandemic i got off i unfollowed everybody on instagram people were like why are you why did you unfollow me uh, you know what i mean i'm just you like you didn't unfollow me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh I just so funny that 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 people care about that stuff now. Right? Ah, yeah, I mean? for sure, like, right? It's, like, Weird. it's just like um, I did it for me, so I could get healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I had to get off social media. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you know. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah man, that's I'm, good, I'm though, in a man. good good place now. It took a long time to get here, man. I, I want to say like thirteen years or something. You know what I mean? I would say the last like. If I would have been the old me when pa the pandemic hit, I, dude, you wouldn't be talking about to me. We probably wouldn't be friends. I probably would be just Shelled like up. wallowing in self pity yeah. and and like I don't know what I'd be doing yeah. if I didn't have like my family or friends there like helping me out and like me like really working on myself. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Yeah, it's great yeah. though, man. It's it's really. It's really important, I think, for, you know, anybody who's listening to this to just, like, recognize that, man, that, like, this stuff is hard. It's not easy. And you're not alone. Like, you know, you're like, everybody's going through it. And <clears throat> no matter what level you think you're going to be, like, good at and be able to coast, it's just not true. And so learn how to manage your expectations, you know, because mm, big this is a this is a, a journey that's not for uh, – the, the the weeping willows yeah you know? the faint of heart not at no, all for man sure. i mean with every career there's ebbs and flows you know totally. everything's up and down but you know um you can't dwell uh you know on on the negative you know that's what i've learned it's like there's always an i'm kind of more of glass half full you know what i mean i'm a little more of an optimist than because i know because i know i have willpower that helps me <clears throat> 
navigate my emotions. Like I can be yeah. like, you know, like, okay, this, this moment sucks right now. I'm not going to live in the suck. I'm going to like mm-hmm. find, find the positivity out of it. Like, you know, yeah. Negative and positive. Like there's always like a lesson to be learned, you know, yeah. and like how open you are will allow you to learn it more quickly, yeah. you know? So you got, you got anything that you're, uh, you got anything going on that's making your heart feel happy right now? I just wrote one of my favorite songs I've, I've written in a while. Um, nice dude. Will so you share it with so me? Where I'm like singing, singing it, at, you know, throughout the house, like, and find myself singing it, which is good. Um, cool, man. And, good for you. um, yeah, I did a lot of cool, creative things last year. I just did like a, a, a short with my friend Ginger Gonzaga, who was in She-Hulk and a bunch of HBO shows. And we did nice. this full-on creative project for a movie she wrote that she's been trying to get to festivals and whatnot. Sweet, uh, like yourself, yeah. that America, you know, just yeah, that, yeah. that grind of like getting your 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 piece of art out there you know and and um so that has been real fun just being kind of taking someone's vision musically and and into a visual piece and and really like going to town and and that's been fun i did voiceover on that too it's like um so that was been really fun and just getting to work closely with a friend that you love and adore that you haven't got to work with before is always like super fun. You know, it's like just two homies getting together and like being as crazy and wild. Like she's so wacky and wild and fun and funny and super talented. And it it was, it kind of like shook up my, like, uh, I don't know, just like my, my creative prowess and like made me think of like other cool things we could do. You know, like when you collaborate with people, that's like my favorite thing. Um, doing music is like, cause we're all individuals and then we get to share with each other and like build off each other. And, and I love that. And I love that about like just filmmaking and, and production in general. Like I love all that stuff. So the, I got to do that with her and see that through and, she's trying to get it off the ground and sell the script and, and hopefully we'll get to make the movie, um, which I'll actually get to be in and I'm going to do all the music for dude. um, So that's like a, that, that movie star Blake Lewis coming out, coming at us. Oh no, it'll be like, come on. It'll be like two lines. (laughs) (laughs) Well, come Um, on dude. But um, yeah, that's, so that's been fun and I'm just making two EPs right now. Um, I have a, a side project called the private language that I we were, we were like two or three songs, like almost done to get the album done. So that's awesome. kind of been like the priorities and um, living in Vegas is weird. Like I don't love I it bet. here. I you bet. don't love it there. You said I don't No. Uh, I thought you uh, did when I saw you last, you know, I love my house. I love my house. Yeah, I love the yeah, space yeah. that I've created for myself um, and that it was cheaper than trying to find a place in LA. You know, mm-hmm. um, this house would be like, over a mil, mm-hmm. you know, and it was not that here. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, very yeah. cheap here. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's bizarre though to be out there. Yeah, and it's only four hours away. I, I just drove back yesterday. So, yeah, cool. I, I, um, That's nice. Uh, I moved here just because LA's right, it's next door. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I don't love it here. I like it, um, but it's a different, it's navigating a new city. It's, it's, trying to navigate the entertainment world here, which is all cover bands and mm-hmm. me doing my own sh- kind of version of what that is. Cause I've never done that. But although people, you know, expect me to like know every cover in the world. Cause I was on American Idol. I was like, I never yeah. covered anyone's music until I was on yeah. that show. Um, so it's, it's different because as an entertainer, I can thrive in this town and it's fun and I can go play anytime I want. Um, but at the same time, it's not the Blake Lewis show. You know what I mean? Sure. I can I can give them me. Um, but until I build that show and like get funding for whatever that looks like, this, you know, that's what this town can be. Um, it's not about the artistry in this town. I mm. mean, mm. Uh, it's about entertaining. So how wild can that be? You know, 
And so it's just like weird. It's like, mm, is this like the, the place that I want to navigate and live? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, I don't hate it and I don't love it. I'm just kind of right in the middle right now. And I'm giving myself a year or two and, 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 because I like to like live in a town. I I can't just show up for a year and then leave. It's like that, yeah, that's not really it. living in it. So yeah, I'd say I'm I've just a chance. This is the third year, and I've just now started living here. And yeah, um, you know, I got a couple great friends here, but uh, and my music partners here, and and you know, we get together every week, and and so that feels like home. You know, yeah, you know. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, man, I'm, uh, I'm trying to just do cool shit with cool people and you're definitely on my list to make things with man Same. at some point. I think you whatever. and I should write a song. Dude, I would love to, man. I can drop some fucking bars yeah, for you, dude. boy. I want to write like a comedy <laughs> song with you. I think we should be <laughs> Let's fun. do it, dude. I, I, yeah. Will you send me the song that you just wrote that you're really proud of? Yeah, I'll send it. It's not done, but. Uh, I'll, I, I'll, come I'll on, let man. You give me first. Give me first glimpse. You want dude. first dibs on? I'm trying to get first dibs. Yeah, baby. I just got. I just got some strings for it, so I got to start editing those and mix those. Or in. send it whatever you feel like you. But want I'm stoked. To. Yeah, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, dude. I truly like. I I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not just saying it because we're on record. I uh, I really admire you, man, and I really think you're like a really solid dude. That I am just like so glad I somehow came into your orbit of Dude, well, because I, I feel the same um, i feel the same about you brother yeah you know? thanks man I, I i look forward to actually like creating something with you and not just um well i mean building this friendship yeah. for sure first and foremost but like getting the chance to actually create and collaborate and you know like i'm planning on making movies and acting in things and getting you involved and having you do music and acting and stuff and wow. getting all of our community to like get together man and i really like that's what i'm most motivated to do at this point in my life is just like get to a place where i can like effectively make art that allows me to pass opportunities to like the people that I love and, and give them like, like parts and contributing space in my stuff. I love that. dude. Um, that's it, man. I just want to like, I just want to do cool stuff, man, with cool, with cool people. That's literally all I want to do. I know. That's all I, that's all I ever <laughs> want to do too. You know, I gotta get yeah, my, man. I gotta get my ass to, to New York. Um, yeah, you're always welcome here, I need, man. I need a, like a week there. I need like a week in so many towns where I can actually see the people I care about. You know, yeah. that's the one thing I will say about living in Vegas is like everyone comes here. So yeah, for sure. If you're on well, your way here, come stay. Well, don't you count know. on me. I fucking hate being some, there. Some people hate <laughs> Vegas, you know. But, <laughs> it gets the worst version of me ever, man. I yeah, like, well, I mean, wanna... if you not if you're hanging out with the locals, baby. That's, that's true, dude. You I'm know? literally just like going to the ATM all day we long. Just be and going fucking... to in and out, and then going out <laughs> yeah. to in. You know what I mean? Out to in, dude. That's <laughs> fucking what it's all about, baby. But uh, yeah, no, I get that. Trust me. Yeah. Like I, I never thought I would live in this town ever. I hated Vegas. And then I met some amazing humans, like amazing yeah. people that are like my bestest friends here that are just yeah. like, you know, obviously Look, no one's from here. Like I've literally yeah. met maybe two people that were like born in Vegas. Everyone's a transplant. So I don't know. I don't know Vegas at all besides like the Vegas that I have seen from inside of a fucking smoke blown yeah, casino and no. like making and wanting to blow my brains out because I'm fucking like <laughs> yeah. broke, hammered, drunk on yeah. some like drug that Which I don't know. 5 a.m. Let's do another <laughs> shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh, God, it but, makes me, I can like yeah. taste it in my mouth. I mean, I haven't done that in like a decade. And that, I mean, yeah, good on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no. Liv yeah. Living in the town that you've, you've partied in so much, it's like you never party here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Some people do and whatnot, but you know, it's like, no, this is just, oh, this is just another town. You know what I mean? Yes. And there's yeah. some really cool art here. And there's, community it's tiny i mean vegas is so small you know what i mean but it's just like a lot of people packed into like a small area um but the thing that i notice about being here is like there's just some really good ass humans here that are That's super great, nice yeah like, way nicer than la way nicer than washington and i love like i wish yeah. i lived back in both seattle and la you know what i mean i love it yeah. but it's, it's awesome, like man. with la it's like every ego has their own marquee Seattle's like passive aggressive. Um, but here it's like 
you're not stepping on people's toes so they don't feel threatened because everyone has a job here and everyone's getting paid and they're doing what they love to do. Mm, cool. Um, so I've just met a lot of happy humans here. That's you know? awesome, man. Sunshine makes should, people smile. Maybe I should, maybe I should, uh, change my opinion of someday we'll, coming we'll, and visiting you, you know, we're not going to force it upon you, but you know, yeah, you know, next yeah. time if you do come back out here, well, you you're always welcome out here in Brooklyn, baby. I oh got yeah, you, uh, Brookline. You can, you can come stay at my place whenever you want. Ooh, I'll be right there. Proud <laughs> to be your friend, man. Really appreciate you coming. You know, on dude, and chatting with me. This has been super fun. Yeah. You got me to open up about stuff I haven't talked about that deep in a long time. Oh really? Yeah, man. I, cool. I, you know, like. Speaking about like American Idol, it's like always little little blurbs here and there. Like, but you you made me like unleash some 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 of the the stuff. Yeah, you know, well, it's precipice of delusion, baby. We're trying to yeah, trying baby, to get vulnerable, dude. Yeah, to... well, actually, yeah, well, I miss you and I miss talking to you. So I know, um, I know. It's been thanks really for nice. having me, dude. I um, I'm stoked to hear hear and see uh, all these other guests in this new endeavor for you. It's cool, man. It's been really, it's been really cool. I'm, I'm like feeling it's a very rewarding experience just to like, again, you know, talk to people that I admire and look up to and be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You, it's hard for you too. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, then yeah. I, I mean, I don't, it doesn't make me happy to know that it's hard for other people, but it's just like, it's a, it's a little no, less No, I mean, isolating. we all want to connect on a level of, of humanity, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, look, so that, that's what I never thought I would be like a, podcast listener my best friend years ago <clears throat> um got me you know into podcasts and i and i started listening to mark maron's podcast like yeah. when he started and he had robin williams on who was my hero mm -hmm. so i was like oh my god and then i was like oh this is cool and then that there wasn't really any now there's like you know like i can i can look up my favorite humans and listen to them and they're about their struggles and i can listen to my friends, you know, getting to talk to people that I respect and, and, or, or just, and listen to like a professor at Stanford who has this person that just went through this crazy thing that no one, you know, it's, it's just amazing. We man. all want to like relate and connect on, on an even level, you know, and, and it's, there is a reason why like people are interested like people want to hear these stories people want to know because we're all we're all so like lonely creatures you know even yeah. with, even if we have tons of love in our life and, and we have a lot of people like we're all i don't know that's why i think we're all the same we're all human that's why i don't i don't get i don't get bigotry and racism and and mm -hmm. i i hate that it exists in this world when we're all just you know one organism honestly so I know. I, I, it's beautiful. I love that you're doing this. I wish I had the confidence. Like, I think back in the day, I, I wanted to have like an American Idol podcast, like do do these things. Like I was saying, I was like helping support these cast, these ex cast members of shows and whatnot, mm -hmm. and tell those stories. But man, I hate talking. <laughs> do you? Yeah, Dang. man. But I have to. Uh, soon, I got a job um, with a charity, Rachel's Challenge, where I'm giving like basically TED talks to like fifth graders and sixth graders throughout the nation oh, about anti-bullying and anti-suicide oh, wow. and stuff. So wow, I'm, cool, I, man. I'm saying yes to speaking things. Um, Good. Yeah. So it's like, for me, it's like, it's like, it's like scarier than any kind of stage. It's like, Oh, you want me to talk? I'm like, just like, let me make noise and beatbox and sing, dude. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know any better, man. I'm probably just ignorantly moving through it because I'm just like, oh, I gotta, I don't know. Like, I'm not checking. I'm not like good at it, checking man. myself. Like, you, I'm not. You ask great uh, questions. You care. Like, you're engaging. Like, this is great, dude. I love it. I'm, I, I love this for you. And I, I can't wait to uh, watch some more. And thanks for having me, dude. Absolutely, man. Thanks for being here, dude. Uh, let's chat soon. And um, maybe we'll make a little rap song, dude. Maybe Ooh, we'll make a little comedy jingle. Some raps. Actually, <laughs> let's make some, make make the intro song for this thing. Let's do let's do an intro song dude, for this thing. I love that. I love it. I love it. Yes, I'm so down. All right, brother. I've kept you long enough. Hey. Love you. Thanks for being here. Just we'll talk it, soon, brother. Heck yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. That was the best. 
What'd you think? Blake Lewis, baby. What a guy. God, that was cool. He, um, he's so awesome, so gracious with his time and energy. And, uh, man, I just really feel like very close and connected to that guy. He's, um, he's so generous and sweet and like, uh, kind of such a kindred spirit to me. I hope you guys liked that episode. Um, you can hear us every Monday on any of the podcast platforms that you like, or you can go to YouTube and watch the video for free. Um, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow the podcast wherever you listen. Um, hit like on the social medias if you're following us. We are at uh, the Precipice of Delusion on Instagram, the Precipice of Delusion underscore podcast on TikTok. Um, you can follow me at Julian Gavilanis on Instagram as well. And um, you can also contribute to this podcast by going to patreon.com slash the precipice of delusion. Uh, if you feel so compelled to contribute to this podcast to help me move it forward, to help me continue to do these things so that I don't have to take another job and... Uh, spend my time doing other things that I don't like doing so that I can do this, uh, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. And um, if you don't, just listening is good enough for me. So check out the Patreon if you have the means. Um, but if you don't, yeah, just keep listening and uh, share it around town. Tell your friends, tell your artist friends. Um, if you have people in mind that you want to have on the pod, shoot them my way. I'm always open to suggestions and people who uh, have an interesting point of view on things so uh yeah thanks guys have a great whoa almost burped um have a great week go do that thing that you have been uh, thinking about push yourself jump out of your comfort zone uh just do it you know stop holding off i know you want to you know you want to just do it if you were waiting for a sign, this is your sign. Write that script. Uh, tape that film. Fucking write that song. Paint that picture. Write that book. Write the first page. Go to the gym. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. But uh, stop making excuses. Just make it happen. All right? Love you guys so much. Thanks for being here, as always. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Now that's what I'm talking about.